Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated. You join me in Syrup Vaults on what serves as our military and justice complex. And in Dwarf Fortress, justice can indeed be quite complex. So today I want to take a look at what it is, how you get it, and how you keep it from killing anyone in your fort. Before we can make use of the justice screen, we need to come to nobles and administrators and appoint a new noble. If your fort hasn't yet reached 50 population and appointed a mayor, this position is going to be sheriff. After that, it is captain of the guard, and you can see that I have one appointed already. If we go to appoint a new one, it will rank them by their tactician skill, and the reason for this is because the captain of the guard is, in effect, a militia captain. They have a squad, which you can bring up in the squad sidebar, and you can assign people to it, uh, up to 10, and you can even put them training. That's not a good idea, and we'll get onto that in a moment. The captain of the guard has requirements for uh, some quarters, a dining room, and an office, and I have set those up here on our justice level in our justice uh, complex just across the way from our prisons and before we get into justice we had better take a look at prisons because there are three tiers of punishment which a prisoner can receive or a criminal can receive in dwarf fortress at the bottom the most lenient form of punishment is a beating above that is a term of imprisonment and above that is a visit from the hammerer Effectively, the fort's executioner. If you convict somebody of a crime and you haven't yet created a prison, and they should receive a prison sentence, instead, that prison sentence will be downgraded to a beating. Now, this is one of the reasons why you don't assign, or why you shouldn't assign, it's generally advised that you don't give any military training to your fortress guard because when they go to administer those beatings, they could kill the criminal. Also, if you don't have any prisons and a period of detention is downgraded to a beating, the victim of the crime will actually feel hard done by. They will feel that even though the person that committed a crime against them can no longer walk and is maybe just been killed, they'll feel that well, justice wasn't properly served because they received a lenient sentence. So the best thing to do is to get your prisons up and running before you actually start administering justice. Now to create a prison or a dungeon, as it is called in the game, all that you really need is a restraint, either a cage or a chain. Now if you use a cage, it limits the prisoner to a one by one square, whereas if you use chains, they can reach the squares around them. So for a prisoner incarcerated here, for example, they can reach the bed, they can reach the table, and they can reach the chair. They can also admire the quality of the chain. And what some players will do is they will even create a stockpile for food and drink, or they will put a well in the room. But in general, a chain, a bed, a chair and a table, that'll keep them happy. So now that you have appointed either a sheriff or a captain of the guard, created some prisons and optionally appointed some deputies to assist the captain of the guard, you can now utilize the justice menu. And it can be quite daunting. There are a number of tabs involved and dwarves do not forgive and they do not forget. If crimes have occurred before the appointment of a sheriff, or a captain of the guard, you might find them waiting for you in the Open Cases tab. Open cases are cases for which there is generally at least one witness, and quite often uh, somebody who has been accused. You will see here that we have a rather troublesome child in the fort, Bimble. They have carried out quite a lot of disorderly conduct, which generally means they have attacked somebody. So here, they have attacked a war dog, Melville. They've attacked Melville again. Here they've attacked Zuggler, our furnace operator. And we have a witness who has reported them. So like I said, these are quite often the very easiest. 
you can simply click on convict. We have one witness identifying Bemble and simply convict. Now, this doesn't do a whole lot because dwarven children do not suffer terms of imprisonment. They don't get beatings either or visits from the hammerer, so nothing is actually going to happen in this case. The most important thing to dwarves, however, is not necessarily the punishment, but simply the conviction. The knowledge that somebody has been found guilty and held responsible for their suffering. Here is Zugler, our furnace operator, who was the victim of Bemble's tirade. And you can see that he feels satisfied upon receiving justice through a criminal's conviction. And it doesn't even matter if the person convicted was the actual criminal identified by the injured party. Dwarves just want justice done on somebody. So here we have Zuntir, a scholar. They also suffered at the hands of Bemble. But I am going to convict Salon, our woodcutter. And if we take a look at Zuntir... She feels satisfied upon receiving justice through a criminal's conviction. I've just convicted a number of innocent people of crimes they did not commit. We're going to see how that works in a few moments and what the uh, sentences look like and what types of sentences they receive. So I've convicted people, like I said, who were not guilty of a crime. It's entirely possible that you might end up with somebody that you really like in your fort, maybe a member of your militia, maybe a mayor, maybe your favorite animal caretaker, somebody that you don't want receiving a beating or a period in prison. So you decide that you're going to convict somebody who can't speak back, somebody who isn't going to be in a position to feel hard done by. Let's convict this gander. Well, that wasn't a great idea. Let's see how the news is being taken in our tavern. Angry after an animal was convicted of a crime. Shaken after an animal was convicted of a crime. Frustrated after an animal was convicted of a crime. If you convict a dwarf of a crime they did not commit, nobody cares. If you convict a gander of a crime they did not commit, every single person in your fort will receive a negative feeling. So it's maybe not a good idea to convict animals unless you want the entire fort to collapse into anarchy. I'm going to come back to interrogations in a moment. We've dealt with open cases. Those are cases that are still ongoing. Closed cases show the results of a prosecution, so a witness uh, who confessed to a crime under interrogation and various people who accused them uh, who the injured party was and who was convicted. Cold cases are cases for whom there aren't any witnesses and you can go about interrogating people in an attempt to find out who the culprit may have been. Uh, another type of cold case is where espionage or theft was committed by somebody who has left the fort and they are no longer capable of being interrogated or where you don't have full information. Here, our witness, Zuntir, implicates somebody. We'll take a look at that now again in a moment. Here is our fortress guard, which is appointed through the squad's menu and here it is telling us what they are actually doing. Uh, quite often, your captain of the guard is going to be doing most of the heavy lifting, uh, but you might from time to time see cases being assigned to other members of the guard. They will go and interrogate or arrest individuals or beat them. And this is why you don't want to train these individuals or allow them to be woodcutters with axes. We might need to sort that out because if they are trained too well, in carrying out their duties of administering a beating, they might seriously injure or kill members of your fort. We're also seeing here that the desired number of cages and chains, so the desired number of uh, dungeons basically, is 20. 
so that's about uh, one for every 10 members of the population. But in general, as long as you can keep the fort happy, you probably don't need that many. Most of our problems in this fort are being caused by some unhappiness, and of course it's pretty much all being caused by one dwarven child who I really should just kick out. The next tab that we're going to look at is convicts. This shows everybody that has been convicted of a crime, whether they have been convicted correctly or not, and it shows what they were convicted for and their sentence which is pending. So if we look at the duck, or the gander, there is no sentence pending at the moment. Here is somebody that I accused, uh, somebody innocent that I accused, also no sentence pending. This will not update until you unpause the game and let maybe a day pass. Having done that, we can now see that Salon is going to be administered with a beating. Poor Dastot, our planter, is also going to get a beating. And Moses is going to receive a beating and 29 days in prison. So it looks as though Salon, for example, who was convicted of three separate crimes, is going to receive a beating for all three, which is then basically just put together as one beating, whereas Mossus is receiving a beating and 29 days in prison. Considering that they have all been sentenced for disorderly conduct, and some of them have injured pets and animals but received two different types of sentences, uh, others have injured people in the fort, I'm not entirely sure what constitutes receiving a beating and what constitutes receiving a period in prison. And just in case you're wondering, even though he is now regarded as a dangerous criminal, no sentence is pending on our gander. And here's what dwarven justice looks like. Dastot, our planter, who was erroneously accused of a crime, they feel loathing after being beaten, shaken after suffering a major injury, and restless after being able to rest and recuperate. They have been sent to the fortress hospital to recover from the numerous injuries that they have received after they got a visit from the captain of the guard, Nomal. So they have been heavily wounded and are now receiving treatment. I'm not too sure about a criminal who commits an offence and then receives a beating, but for a criminal who receives a period in prison, they do receive a feeling of being repentant for the crime that they committed, and that then is something that could, uh, in future, impact their personality. So far we've been dealing with crimes which are pretty straightforward, and in truth the only criminal here is myself for the amount of suffering that I've bestowed upon ganders and dwarves in this fort. But what about where the culprit isn't so obvious? We have an attempt, sadly a successful attempt, to steal Ruther Fancy's The Ripe Bow. We had a witness, Mebzut, and they implicate Ebek. Bear that name in mind. Here is attempted espionage against the Innocent Paints, which is the name of our fortress. And we did have a visitor, a goblin called Lemma Held Cloudy, who visited the fort, spoke with somebody, and left. Now, they actually managed to get somebody to steal an item for them. Uh, that has gone into the cold cases, and what I've been doing is I have been going down to basically everyone in the fort and interrogating them to see if I can find out any additional information. So for any case, for an open case or a cold case, not so much closed cases, you can click on, you can either interrogate or I should say you can either convict somebody of the crime or if you're looking for more information, you can click on interrogate and schedule an interrogation. A member of the fortress guard generally the captain of the guard will then locate that person and effectively haul them very slowly to their office to interrogate them. So you might want to put your 
captain of the guard's office in a kind of a central location. And when they have interrogated that person, the report will appear in the Intelligence tab. And clicking on Intelligence tab brings us to even more submenus. The first one is Interrogations. This is a list of everyone who has been interrogated in the fort. And here we can see the interrogation report of Mebzeth. Now they have identified Ebek as being responsible for the theft of one of our items. And if we open the interrogation report, we get the name of the individual who carried out the interrogation and a bit of a description. So Nomal met with subject, appealed to the subject's belief in the law, subject value the law. In the late summer of 105, an unidentified creature corrupted the subject in order to have an agent. In Syrup Vaults, an unidentified creature met with the subject and made a threat. Subject spurned the law and agreed willingly. Subject revealed that in the late summer of 105, subject plotted to steal Ruther Fancy's the right bow under the influence of an unidentified creature. So from carrying out this interrogation, you can then right click to close that window and go back to your interrogations tab. From carrying out that interrogation, we received some information uh, relating to a theft of an item. I actually interrogated that person just as part of a general process of interrogating over a different crime. So if you interrogate somebody about a crime, if they've committed any or if they've been involved in any, they will admit to anything that they have been involved in. Here, for example, is a report from a farmer, Erush, admitting to taking bribes 40 years ago. When I generated this world, I let it play out for a hundred years. So they're admitting to crimes that were committed before this fort was even created. And this can be useful information if you are looking to appoint nobles, you could interrogate your nobles as part of a crime to find out if they are susceptible to bribery. So here we can see that this farmer accepted bribes in exchange for leniency when they served as captain of the guard of the Rack of Phrasing in the year 67. And you can learn interesting information about your dwarves by carrying out interrogations like this. Now, when you've carried out a number of interrogations, a short summary will be populated in the Actors tab. So this is basically a file on every single person that we have interrogated. Here is a goblin who visited our camp recently, or who visited our fort with a name like No Thief. We should have... We should have known... So they are associated with a plot to infiltrate our fortress and to steal an item from us. And they are a member of an unidentified organization. These are other individuals who we have interrogated that have not been able to uh, give us any information or who have had no information to give us. There is Mebzat, who stole the Ruther Fancies the Right Bow, with Ebek. We'll be taking a look at them in a minute. And when they are discovered, accounts are also created for unidentified individuals. So here we have unidentified. They are the highest known operative or the highest known actor in an organization, an unidentified organization. And they are connected with plots to infiltrate a nearby settlement and to infiltrate our settlement. Now these organizations are a bit better portrayed in the Organizations tab. You actually get a visual representation. So here is a thief, Zan Blushbook, the bearded, one of our Hammer Dwarves, serving in our military. They stole an item and took it off the map, where it was picked up by Lemma Held Cloudy. Now Lemma foolishly returned to the fort later on, I was able to arrest them for espionage. Theft put them in jail for 29 days. Espionage put them in jail for another 220. And when we interrogated them, we found out that they were acting under the instructions of an as yet unidentified individual. Now, 
there's not really a lot that you can do here. Once an item has been stolen from you and it's gone off the map, you're not really getting it back unless you manage to go to the world map, uh, locate it, and create a mission to go out and retrieve it. However, you can find out some rather interesting roleplay aspects from these interrogations. Lema Hellcloudy is a member of a nearby dwarven tower, which contains a book called Ushrir Attic Pages Interpreted. Ushrir Attic Pages is the necromancer mayor of our fort, and the book details their apprenticeship in the year 56. So I'm very interested, now that I know of its existence, to get to that fort and to get my hands on that book and see if maybe this boss, this unidentified individual, isn't actually the necromancer that our necromancer mayor served once upon a time. Here are some other organizations that are also unidentified, and it's not entirely clear whether it's the same organization or not. Uh, here is one where Fath stole an item. It was picked up by an unidentified individual who is now dead, and we know they're dead, because uh, we managed to catch them, leaving the fort with the scepter, and we managed to kill them before they got out the door. So here's the organization's uh, tab, pretty much just a representation, a visual representation of what we have here on the actors tab and what we have discovered through interrogations. And finally, finally, the last thing that we have in Justice is a list of all of the plots and the organizations that have carried them out. And you can see why I am doing so much interrogation at the moment. There have been a number of plans to infiltrate our base uh, to infiltrate our fort and to steal our artifacts which have been created by fey moods so this is something that you might want to do is to set up justice to protect these items speaking of protecting treasured items you will remember that somebody stole ruther fancies their name was ebek well the fool returned I did get a pop-up the first time that they were here that Ebek, a leader, had arrived at the fort. And if we take a look at their groups, they're a criminal member of a criminal organization, the Group of Wilts. So I should have realized this wasn't a great person to have in the fort. If we look at their relations, uh, we can see individuals who they are connected to. So if Ebek was to commit a crime, and if we were to catch him leaving the map, an interesting idea would be to come to the relations screen and to interrogate some of these individuals. Uh, close acquaintances or close friends within the fort would indicate that they have maybe made uh, an agent, or that they have been able to corrupt somebody, and that they are using them either to help them steal items, or to plan a coup. Now, espionage at the moment is not really implemented in Dwarf Fortress. Uh, if you check out what it states, it's that they're attempting to form into coup, that they're basically attempting to corrupt individuals and have them carry out a coup within your fort. That isn't actually implemented in the game at the moment, so uh, other than protecting your artifacts, which have been created in Fey Moods, or in Strange Moods, Justice... When dealing with espionage and theft doesn't really uh, do much else. And of course, one way of dealing with all this would be simply to come to any buildings that you might have, uh, click on the magnifying glass, and make sure that uh, the only people who can visit your fort are citizens. If you keep unwanted, undesirable snake people out of your fort, they can't steal anything. But if you want bards to be able to visit your taverns and scholars to be able to visit your nice library, you're going to need to fall back on the Captain of the Guard and Intrigue to protect your artifacts. There is another noble position which is associated with Intrigue, but it doesn't look to have been fully implemented yet, and that is Dungeon Master. 
if you click to appoint a new dungeon master, it prioritizes individuals who are talented in scheming. And it looks as though this is going to have something to do with recruiting agents who may be able to serve you in your fort, and also in identifying agents who have been recruited and possibly in identifying individuals who are up to no good. But as that hasn't yet been implemented, all we can do is rely on justice. And we can't get Ruther Fancies back, but we can put Ebek in prison. Twenty-nine days in prison for theft of a priceless artifact. Okay, I think it was a chalk ring worth about two and a half thousand. Anyway, it doesn't seem like much. But now that we have them here, what we could do is come to one of our cold cases, or even actually uh, the theft of Ruther Fancies itself. So this is the actual removal of Ruther Fancies by Mebzoth. They've confessed, and I haven't convicted them yet. But what we could now do is we could interrogate Ebek. Now, this is definitely a menu that could do with a search bar at the top. We're going to have the culprit, the most likely person to convict. Under that, we're going to have the remaining 200 individuals of our fort in no sensible order. Under that, we're going to have deceased individuals. And then, we have those who are currently visiting our fort, and there is Ebek, and we will schedule an interrogation. So there is the captain of the guard, Nomal has interrogated Ebek. And we can now come to our intelligence page, scroll down to the most recent report. And here we have a tremendous amount of, of information about this individual going back a number of decades. But it still tells us that the subject revealed that in the midsummer of 105... The subject plotted to infiltrate the innocent paints, that's us, in order to steal treasures and prepare a coup under the influence of an unidentified creature. And so to a degree, we're no closer to finding out who is the mastermind sending these people to our fort. But we have at least identified another threat as they have admitted to being involved in espionage, if we go to open cases, we can now see that uh, new reports have been put in place, or new cases have been put in place, including espionage against the innocent paints. Witness is Ebek. And here is another one in which Ebek has confessed. So this is the one relating to Ebek themselves. This is the one relating to their paymaster. And we can, of course... Convict Ebek and put him away for another 200 or so days. So there you go. This has been a rather lengthy discussion on justice and intrigue in Dwarf Fortress. It's one of the more complicated aspects of the game. A couple of things haven't been implemented yet. A lot of people tend to stay away from it or to ignore it completely but it can be used to gather information on individuals within your fort who may be a threat to your internal security, who may be working with external forces to steal all the crap that your dwarves make when they get into strange moods. In short, you can use justice to convict individuals of crimes like disorderly conduct, and it will give a bit of a mood buff to the victim. 
Uh, because of the threat to the criminals themselves, it's generally best not to appoint a hammerer. And if you are going to appoint members to the Fortress Guard, don't train them. Maybe give them some armor, uh, some leather armor, the way they can defend themselves. But do not, most certainly, do not give them silver war hammers, or there's going to be a lot of trouble. You can also use the justice system to hunt down vampires. I should have pointed out that uh, there is also a tendency by your nobles to get very offended if there is a failure to meet one of the uh, production demands that they make. That gets treated like a crime. And also, the export of a prohibited item. The dwarf that hold that item to the trader, not the dwarf that actually sold it, the dwarf that hold that item to the trader, if you then proceed to sell that item, uh, your nobles will consider that hauler dwarf to be a criminal. So you can send them to, uh, to jail or give them a beating, the way that your nobles feel better about themselves. If you have any questions on justice or intrigue in Dwarf Fortress, do post them below. If there's anything I left out, uh, comment below as well. If you would like to see the progress of Sirip Volts now that it has been elevated to capital of our civilization, now that the Queen, the granddaughter of our necromancer mayor, has decided to live in the fort, and if you would like to see the militia that we are currently focusing on, if you would like to see them sent out to a neighboring dwarven tower to bring back an account of our necromancer mayor's education, uh, check below in the description for a link to my Twitch channel where I have been playing uh, with this fort over the last while. I'm hoping at least to make it out 10 years. I started in the year 100, we're into 108 at the moment. So hopefully we'll make it out the decade. And if you've any other questions that you would like answered about aspects in Dwarf Fortress, do post them below as well. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and I hope that you will continue to be a law-abiding citizen.